Hi students, hope you are fine. This is the continuation of previous video which we uploaded under the name of joint product and byproduct costing. Because is, this is the four method for allocating the joint cost. Usually students, this is the method which our examiner is interested to ask in the exam because it's a bit lengthy method, but previous method, definitely he also asking, we cannot ignore those methods as well. So that if uh, you are following the GLAME syllabus, uh, you can join me from page number because we are solving one of the example from page number 268. Like after finishing this topic, the third video for this topic, we will make for the practice questions. Because the normal trend is this, uh, half of the understanding you develop when you listen the concept about the topic and the remaining understanding you develop when we solve the questions. So I hope that when we will solve the questions related to these topics, so you will be fully prepared about this topic. Students, so let me recall you what is our task. Uh, like if you listen the previous video, you will definitely have the idea, but let me recall for you what's our task. So remember in our previous video, we defined about the joint products and also we talk about the joint or common cost, which is jointly incurring for the multiple products. So in our previous video, we said that say we are having the crude oil, which we are putting into the refining process and after reaching to certain level of processing, it is splitting into various products. So till the point of split off, whatever the cost we are incurring, that cost we consider as joint cost. And we are learning different methods, how to allocate this joint cost to various products. So today we are discussing the fourth method, which we call constant gross margin percentage method. So in scale, three steps we need to perform. Let me guide you first about three steps. I'll give you some idea. And then we will apply these three steps. Like what will be the pattern first? Once you are watching the videos, if you will have any confusion, you can write the comment and I'll be answering you about your queries. Students here, three steps need to perform in order to allocate the joint cost by using this method. In the first step, we have to calculate the overall gross margin. Students, the overall gross margin means the total gross margin for all the products, not for the single product. Like later we will calculate this one, you will find out this. In the second step, students, what we have to do, we will use this equation uh, which we are having this equation, sales is equal to cost plus gross margin. What he's saying, subtract the appropriate gross margin from the final sales value of each product to calculate the total cost for that product. Like this equation, we will apply on each product. And like that, we will subtract the gross margin from the sales value of each product. So this formula in fact student cost is equal to sales minus gross margin. So this formula individually we need to apply for each product. So this is the second step later when I'll, I'll apply, you will have better understanding. Students, the third step, what's the third step? Uh, in order to understand the third step, I'll give you a little uh, more understanding like students we already discussed in unit number one total cost is equal to direct material direct labor plus manufacturing overhead like in previous unit we also said that total cost is equal to total variable cost plus total fixed cost And here students, another formula we are having for the total cost. Total cost is equal to joint cost plus separable cost. 
So in the third steps, friends, I have to use the third formula. In this one, I just mentioned for you, for your better understanding, we can have the different formulas to calculate the total cost. But here I'll use this formula. So in the third step, what he's saying, he's saying that from the total cost, which we will calculate in the second step, we will subtract the separable cost and we will have the share of joint cost. So in the third step, you will understand more once I'm applying all these three steps. All right, let's start. Students, in order to, in order to perform the first step, we need the sales value and we need the total cost. Like, you know, the formula of gross margin, gross margin is equal to sales minus cost. In order to calculate gross margin, you need to subtract the total cost related to all the products from the sales value. And here I told you students total cost is equal to joint cost plus separable cost. So you need to actually subtract joint cost and separable cost from the sales value in order to get the gross margin. So before applying this one, let us calculate the sales value here. <clears throat> Sales price of each product given, we just need to multiply the quantity with the sales price and we got the sales value, individual sales value. Like that students, we got the total sales value, which we will further use to calculate the gross margin. I mean, it's very simple to calculate the sales value, quantity multiplied by price, we got the sales value. Like that, we got the total sales value as well. Students, now I am having the sales value. Uh, actually, it's the continuation of previous examples. Uh, if you will find it, page 268, we are in the book and three methods we already discussed in the previous video. So actually, data, same data we are using, which we discussed in the previous examples as well. Over joint cost here, we are having 100,000 and over separable cost is equal to 7,000. Students, for your reference, when you are watching this video, you will go to page 267. There we use different values. Like I can show you for a reference purpose, in our previous methods, when we calculated the NRV, there we applied this formula sales minus separable cost so these different separable costs we subtracted from the sales value to calculate the nrv before so the sum of these all separable costs is actually 7000 which now i am using to calculate the gross margin students earlier i told you in order to calculate the gross margin you need to subtract the cost from the sales value so here cost is equal to joint cost and separable cost. So students here, my gross margin is equal to sales value. We got it before, like remember in the previous slide, I calculated the total sales value and the total sales value I'm having 145,000. From that one, I subtracted 100,000 and 7,000 is my separable cost, which mentioned here as well. So like that, friends, I got the gross margin. Once you are having the gross margin, it's very easy to calculate gross margin percentage. Gross margin percentage equal to gross margin dividing by sales multiply by 100. Like that, you will have the percentage, friends. 38,000 dividing by sales value, you got the percentage. The first step I already completed. I hope that students, you will be fully clear once you will see the first step. We just calculated the gross margin percentage. Second step students, earlier I explained you what we need to do in the second step. We need to subtract the gross margin from the final sales value of each product. Like what we need to do in the second step, we are going to perform use this equation sales is equal to cost plus gross margin so in the second step what he's saying uh, we need to subtract the gross margin of each product from the sales value 
so sales minus gross margin so gross margin percentage students we already have by multiplying the percentage with the sales value we can have the gross margin like here how we did this is over sales value minus gross margin how i am calculating the gross margin percentage multiply by sales value yes friends as earlier we said this step we need to perform for all the products like what we have to do say here by multiplying the percentage with the sales value you are getting the gross margin for that particular product and that gross margin you subtract from the sales value like that you will have actually the cost which is actually the total cost of particular product so these steps students need to perform for each product let me guide you one more time what's the second step students in the second step you have to use this equation sales is equal to cost plus gross margin so in the second step we need to perform it individually for each product and we will actually calculate the cost of each product by subtracting the gross margin and how you get the gross margin you multiply the percentage of gross margin with the sales value respective product so once you subtract the gross margin of each product from the sales value you get the cost of that product students so this cost is actually the total cost and total cost here is equal to joint cost plus separable cost like you already have the total cost of as far it is how much 15497 joint cost students you have to calculate the share of joint cost and in this case the separable cost for as far we are having 1000 which we are picking up from the previous example so it will go another side and like that joint cost for the as far we will have 14497 so it's this step which i did here for the as far here you can see that we are performing for all the products like here if we perform this step for the kerosene total cost is equal to joint cost plus separable cost so total cost for the kerosene we are having how much 6641 6641 which we got from this step joint cost we have to get it separable cost for this kerosene we are having 2000 it will go another side subtracting from the total cost like that you will have the share of joint cost all right students so this was the method Re i mean remaining things you will learn through the practice video i mean uh, we will upload all the videos one by one and at the end we will give you in all uh, videos Uh, the link for all the videos we will give you as well the next treatment I mean the continuation of the same topic let us finish this one here as well it's actually the treatment of by products so by products uh, we have to decide whether it will give us the benefits for further processing or not that we define later but here students first let us discuss the two treatments of by products so in the first treatment for by product we are having we have to decide whether we are having market available market for this one or not like if we can sell it in the market we know the estimated market value that this much value we can get it by selling the by product in the market so what we can do we can record it as our inventory so its by products are those products which are producing at as a part of the process but we don't have intention to produce those one like in petroleum industry different kind of by products we are having and in some other industry like sugar industry also different kind of chemicals we are getting as a by products 
because we don't have intention to produce those products, but as a part of the process, those products are producing. So if we have some reasonable value for, for those products, we record it as inventory. And later when this inventory we will sell, we are passing this entry, cash, debit, and inventory credit. When later actually we sell this inventory, which we recorded here as inventory for buy product, when actually we sell this one, we pass this entry, we say cash, debit, and buy product, buy product credit. So this is the first treatment when we think that uh, we are having the idea about the market value of buy product. But the second entry we say is that in case we don't have idea, estimated net realizable value, we don't know. So in that case, we will not record it as inventory. We, we, uh, we will just keep it aside. And when we are selling, we pass this entry cash debit and cost of goods sold credit. So this is the treatment when we don't have estimated net realizable value. All right, students. So this was all about the topic. Uh, the next video you will see about the practice courses. Thank you very much.